Check it out. Look at the rainbow. I haven't seen a rainbow in years. And that, as far as rainbow goes, that's at least an eight or a nine on the rainbow scale. And if I'm not mistaken, the pot of gold is literally only in the field a few away. Roxy, do you want to go on a pot of gold hunt? Let's go. Good evening. It's been a busy day. Mark has been over. We've been packing all day. The launch was a massive, booming success. You guys went mental. There's over 300 items that have gone out already today. It's going to continue up and over out through the weekend. If you're in the UK, guys, you'll get your stuff very shortly. If you are outside of the UK, it gets you somewhere between five to 10 days is usually, but sometimes it gets there quicker. Uh, just cleaning somebody's ears and she's not amused with me at all. She's gone to the cage and all I'm getting is butt face. Are you annoyed? Huh? You don't look happy? Yeah. It's a rough life, isn't it, Rox? Lady has kept us fed today, so we've done all right. We've had some decent balanced meals, but we're now going to head to the gym. It is currently 8 p.m., so gym shots are 10. Basically, I haven't been to the gym in the last three days because launch. Simply, you know, there's so much to do around that time. Pictures, websites, coding, all the stocks there. And you guys know videos and sizing. Ah, ah, ah. It's always worth it, always worth it. But some things do get put on the back burner. So I haven't been for three days. That means today I'm going to go and I'm going to do four body parts. Normally I do two or three, but I did a fourth to play catch up to make up for it. So we're going to have some quick food, pre-workout, and then we're going to go and hit up some squats, some bench, and some accessory work. And if you watched the last video and you are joining in with the vacuum challenge, hashtag challenge, I'm gonna be starting doing that. I've already done some this morning, but I'm gonna be carrying on my vacuum work in the gym. If you don't know what that is, go back and watch the last video. We're gonna do it between now and four weeks time. I will set an exact date in the next video once I work it out, and then I'll go through how you guys are gonna enter. A lot of you have been tweeting me about it, which is perfectly fine. But what I want you to basically do is I want you to take a starting relaxed picture now with good posture, then with maximum uh, vacuum capabilities being shown. Then you can take pictures a long way if you want to, but in four weeks time, we're gonna take an end result photo, relaxed and then vacuumed. And then I'm gonna pick like a top 10 and then from them I'm gonna pick maybe top three winners for some giveaway prizes. And I will have a couple of people picking things with me just to make sure it will be fair, it will be as fair as possible. But there you go, that's how we're gonna do it. Hope that makes sense. Um, it's basically the vacuum challenge. If you want to add in the planks, you're totally welcome to. This is a challenge, so anything that challenges you is great. What I want you to be able to do is one or two times a day, five sets of holding the vacuum for 30 seconds. And people were asking, you know, they can't hold their breath for that long. They're exhaling out when they're doing the vacuum, so they can't keep it. That's fine. Do a rest pause. If you need to stop after 10 seconds, stop and reset and do it, and then just count forward with another 20 seconds. Makes sense? Do it that way. Over time, you'll get better and better and better. This is all about abdominal and core control. That's what can connect the mind to the muscle to create better posture and just more control overall. And the same principles apply throughout everything that you're going to be doing in the gym. Mind to muscle, control, consistency, time. Okay, so it is 8 p.m. I don't want to be massively stimmed out, but I do want to take a pre-workout because I want to have a kick-ass workout while I'm there. Workout, workout, workout. PSI, and this time I've got it in Kiwi Strawberry. Pre-workout carbs are going to be these bad boys, which are King's Mill Toasties. In each one of these, you have only 1.3 grams of fat, 27.9, so let's call it 28 grams of carbohydrate, and 4.4 grams of protein. Stick them in the toaster, nom nom. Intra workout, mini Skittles, because one, they taste good, and two, to make you look massive and perspective to everyone else in the gym. That's how you look bigger. You eat smaller things. And most important of all, Evian, Livian. I'll just tell you about how to look bigger. So due to really bad timekeeping, we've got him with only an hour to spare. I don't know how it happened, but it did. So we're just getting warmed up on the bench. We're gonna press this out and I'm gonna have a go with the slingshot just to show you guys kind of what it is if you don't know what it is and how it kind of works. Then I'm gonna show you just little bits and secrets of the training that I think you might find interesting. And then tomorrow I'll go through a full session with you guys. So these bench presses, which you'll see most standard gyms, they're not the best. They're a little bit low, 
they're not wide enough, but they're just what you'll find in a non-powerlifting gym. What you want to be concentrating on though is planting your feet on the floor, heels down, gripping the bar nice and hard. You want to drive through with an arch lower back and your glutes squeeze tight. Drive through your feet and transfer that force through into the bar by gripping it hard with your hands, shoulders back. Remember what I said about rather than lifting like this, drop that elbow and rotate it under. Just that movement, under, under. So you end up pressing, boom, more power. Then three little tips for this one. So what's up guys, we're back and we're gonna take a look at chest today. No matter what I said before, we just ran out of the time. So I still actually managed to get some decent footage and one of them being this stretch motion I want you to take a look at. So it's palm up, and then you're going to twist and turn away and this helps really stretch off the upper pec and open up all your chest it is a really really great stretch that probably most of you have never used because I didn't used to do this in the correct manner and that, that is the point of having that palm really facing upward and then maintaining that rotation on the arm you relax the shoulder joint and twist up and away with the chest and really allow it to pull through and try and keep your arm as straight as possible don't let the elbow dip too much so taking a look at the posture on the bench, I think it's going to be really useful, especially for people who are like me, they're not power lifters, they've probably done a lot of bro benching in their time. So still being new to this, this has really helped me set my posture correctly for the bench and help improve it over time. I'm still new to this, but you know, you got to start somewhere. So here I'm up on my toes, I've got my glutes squeezed in, I'm arching my lower back, I have my chest up and I'm rolling, I've rolled my shoulders back and I'm kind of pinning them down on the bench and setting the posture. From this point, what you're going to see is you're going to see me drop my feet down to the sides of the bench, but maintain the upper body with the arch in my lower back. Also taking up my hand position is kind of middle of the ground. It's not too wide, not too narrow. My shoulders are pinned back and held back. My lower back is arched and I have my feet slightly behind my knees with my heels driven into the floor. From here, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to drive through the heels. I've engaged my lats at this point. So you want to tighten your lats, engage at the heels, engage at the hands, so gripping the bar tight. And you're gonna drive that force through from the heels through keeping the glutes nice and tight, chest up, lower back arched and driving through with squeezed hands. You see I did the first few reps quite nice and slow, that was to set that mind to muscle pathway and then I rep out just to start getting the joints warm and everything in position. So moving on to a little bit more heavy weight, for those that don't know I'm coming back from an injury which affected my squat but also my bench. It was a left hand side of me that was damaged in a car accident so I had left shoulder impingement which basically stopped me benching for over two years because I used to get real severe shoulder pain. But since doing the rotational work, the stretch work and everything like that, I've actually had zero pain whilst benching. So here you can see that body posture, chest up, shoulders back, lats engaged, driving through the heels with my glutes squeezed the whole time. Squeezing your glutes really helps stop you raising your hips off the bench which is very, very useful when you're trying to get used to driving through the heels. Here you can see I'm working with a lot of control. I'm making sure that I'm stabilizing on the way down and I'm not bouncing and firing back up. So control is going to be key here. And we're going to look at pre and post versions of the slingshot. As I said, I had impingement in my left shoulder. This meant that I was getting severe pain whilst bench pressing. And that was mainly due to the fact that the shoulder was not sitting in place where it should be. Other muscles were taking control and they were being overloaded, which was causing pain and also stress on the ligaments and tendons. Now, since resetting myself, which I'd like to add is way easier if you are wearing a stringer because your skin will stick to the bench and you won't move. In the hoodie, I tended to slip a little bit, especially when I was trying to set up and drive. So just a little tip there. But here you can see I've got some elbow sleeves on. These are not really there for any kind of structural support at this point. They were more just to keep the joints warm. It's winter in England and it is getting cold. I have tiny joints and my joints is where I feel pain, especially when I cool down in between sets. So keeping heat in the joints really helps. But here you can see me with the posture that I was talking about and I've got 100 kilos on the bar here. First time I've been able to press 100 kilos without any shoulder pain in two years. It's really incredible. and just goes to show what proper form can do as I only started this rehab at the same time as a squat just over three weeks ago. Okay, so for the final set, I'm going to show you the slingshot. And this is basically an aid to helping you bench a little bit heavier or to get a few more reps on those last sets when you start to feel tired or the joints are feeling it. So it goes on like this, pulling up over the elbows. And from here, what it does is force you to stay in the correct bench press position because you can't flare too wide. So getting the bar off is a bit awkward, but once off, you're going to bring it down. And as we get to here, it's going to flex across and give you elastic recoil to fire back up, which is where most people fail. And then allows you to lock out those heavy weights or get a few more extra reps on that same weight you were doing before. Check it out. 
Now, just like with squats during the week, I have been doing bench pressing kind of up to three or four times a week. One of those sessions is a dedicated chest session and the other ones are where I'm benching in other sessions just to start getting the motor pathway in my head sorted, posture and technique down. Before you saw me do five reps though with this same weight, obviously I'm a little tired at the end of the week, but you're still going to see me do 10 reps. That's double the amount of reps when I had the slingshot on. And that's because at the base of the movement, it gives you elastic recoil to be able to press up, but then once off your chest, you take the full complete load of the weight again. So this is a great tool to help you to either push further with the same weight or to actually be able to increase your overall weight that you're handling with the body in a safe manner there was zero shoulder and elbow pain which is also a great benefit so there you go you see we go from a five to six rep range to ten it's now sling shot what it does is it helps force you to correct body position but it also takes a massive amount of stress off the shoulders and the elbows so if you do find that you suffer on the bench press shoulder elbow pain this could be a real solution to help you progress on the bench without exacerbating those injuries after this, carried on and did another set with the slingshot and then one pullback set. Seven sets in total on the bench, so very happy with that towards the end of the week. That's a good achievement. Then we moved on, did these incline presses with dumbbells. I want you to notice a lot of things here. One, Look how I've got the arch in my lower back, chest up. Look at the back head angle of the dumbbell. You can see how it's highly elevated compared to the front. The grip is a medium grip, so I'm in between a hammer grip and a flat grip. And you're driving up through the palms of your hands, not allowing the shoulders to come into the motion. Again, look at me, set my shoulders, chest up, and then I go back holding that position. What I'm trying to do here is make my chest into like a tabletop, to like level it off. And then you drive through to a natural point of full extension. It will feel a little stunted, but you'll feel the absolute load never leave the chest. If you do this properly, guys, it'll be one of your favorite exercises. After doing this, we carried on onto back and we did two exercises of five sets, but we supersetted them between lat pull down and seated narrow grip rows. Okay, so really a blaster session, but a good focus on bench. And we pretty much finished with uh, supersets on back. So whatever time you've got, you can make use of it. Here until the doors are shutting. You see, I say I'm not much of a car man, and I really am not. I mean, I love my bike, so I don't really care about our cars. Mine's got a dented door still from when Dick Laney crashed it, so I'm having it repaired. Do you know when you get home, after you've been out, and you, you know, you say to, say to the girlfriend, oh yeah, take my car to the gym. Yeah, well don't, because this kind of happens. Oh, it's like a can of baked beans. Sorry. What did you do? No. What did you do? Car. You wrecked the car. You opened it like a can of beans. How do you feel right now? This is why we can't have nice things, Lainey. This is why I'm going to go and trade that in for a tractor. <laughs> Whenever Mark comes over and he's got this beautiful 4 Series, it does make me think, yeah. I think maybe we should up my car game a bit. <laughs> I am back and I'm even better. Whoa!